this video, I'm going to run through the techniques used in the Poochie Keen Pullover. This tutorial is from Kramer Yarns and the pattern is designed by Beth, I want to get this right, Aidala, A-I-D-A-L-A. -A. I'll have it listed out in the video description field. Um, she designed this sweater, a bunch of different sizes. It uses Kramer Yarns Perfection Worsted Yarn. Now we've used Perfection DK yarn in a lot of tutorials before. This one uses the worsted yarn, very easy care yarn. It's a wool blend, keep your dog warm, but it's also really easy care because it can go in the, in the washing machine and the dryer, no problem. Um, and goodness knows we can't exactly make our dogs stay clean if we want them to stay clean. This sweater is size, has a, a wide range of sizes and in this tutorial we're going to talk about getting the size just right for your dog. Um, before we go any further, let's cut away to a picture. This is my dog Dolly in the sweater. When I took this picture I hadn't even blocked it yet, but you'll see that she, it fits her very well. And one of the reasons that it fits really well is you'll see the sweater doesn't fit really much beyond their front legs. It, you know, it covers their chest. So if a dog has a really narrow waist, like Dolly, she's a Whippet, one-year-old, um, it won't matter because it kind of drapes over the back. Or if a, your dog has more of a sausage body, <laughs> it's gonna be fine if, that their waist is thick because the sweater doesn't really fit around their waist, which also keeps it clean when they go to the bathroom. Important. So I have this sweater here and I have a, a sampling of the Perfection yarns. Now, when you go, well, let me do this first. You can click the little I to go to my website to see all the links that I'm going to talk about here. I'll also put them in the video description field below. This pattern is an excellent value and you have the option when you follow the link to get the pattern on its own or a kit. And you also have the same options. Look at how appropriate there's a dog in my stuff over here while we're doing the dog sweater. Elby, you wanna be on camera? No, he just wants to stare at me. Um, you have the option of a knit or a crochet version and getting the pattern on its own or a kit. Now here, here's the rundown. We're doing the knit version in this one. So the crochet version is something different, but I'm sure it's still a very good pattern, not too difficult to follow. Um, you can get one of the kits, and they have several kits put together, or you can just go to the Perfection DK, Perfection Worsted page on their website and pick out the colors that you want. And there are over 70 colors, I think, of this yarn. So if you have, you know, the sports team colors or your favorite colors or the colors that are going to look good on your dog, or if you want to do stripes, you'll need more colors. You can just get the yarn separate, you know, kind of build your own kit and then get the pattern um, kind of a la mode. You get all of this. No, that's with ice cream, a la carte, I think is when you buy things separately. So um, those are the options. And in the yarn that I have that I'm going to show in my samples and everything else, I rubber banded the ones together that actually come in a kit. And this one is gold dust and I really should have glasses on for this. Garnet. This is gold dust and garnet. This is a kit. This one's rubber banded together. And this one is silver gray and bright blue. Look at me squinting when I have glasses right here. Um, and a lot of these other ones are just uh, ones that you can buy to build your own kit. And you're going to see I have a bunch more. Um, okay, before we go any further, I want to talk about the needles for this because it's Gosh, I don't think I've ever done a pattern where, oh, here's the girl that was just in that picture. Can you see her? Yeah, you can't see her. This is your sweater, huh? She hasn't been allowed to wear it yet because I was trying to keep it clean for the tutorial. <laughs> so now after this, hey! Okay, well, this is what it's like shooting from home during a pandemic with dogs in the house. They just knocked over one of the lights. It's not broken. Um, okay, that's enough. They'll get bored with it in a minute. I am sorry, but I'm leaving this in because <laughs> it's a pandemic and it's a dog sweater video. Okay, what was I saying? Oh, I've never done a tutorial before on a garment that has so, such a wide range of sizes. And when I'm talking about wide range of sizes, I'm not talking about extra small to 3XL. I'm talking about teeny tiny dog to big dog, right? This is pretty, pretty dramatic. Each size still uses a size six, 
for the ribbing and a size 7 for the stockinette body of the sweaters. The size of the needles doesn't change, but the kind of needles that we can use does change. And I wrote this down because I actually tested it out. Um, the extra small, small, and medium sizes, you have you don't have enough stitches to start on 16 inch circulars, so you're going to have to find an alternative to that. But the uh, large and the extra large, you can start on 16 inch circulars. For Dolly's sweater, LB, that's enough. Stop. For Dolly's sweater, I started on 16 inch circulars and then moved to 24 inch circulars after I had done a bunch of increases. Um, for all the little samples, I knit in the smallest size for all the samples I knit. Okay, he must know that we're doing a dog sweater video, so why he's being so terrible. It, stop. Enough. Stop. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, you'll need to find, uh, if you're doing one of the smaller sizes, and I imagine a lot of people are going to knit this sweater for little bitty chili dogs, right? You're going to need to either use double-pointed needles, flexible double-pointed needles, a magic loop, or short circulars. And I have, I have all of them here. Oh, I don't have DPNs here, but I have a long circular needle. You can use magic loop if you're comfortable with that, where you have bits of cord sticking out on one side and your needle sticking on the other, and you're knitting your small diameter knitting you know, in the middle like this. I have short circular needles, which is, I'll show you what I used for knitting all these samples. I have a tube of flexible double pointed needles here, also great for small diameter knitting. And if you're going, if you need to invest in some of these needles, um, you'll use them for other things, you know, for sock knitting, for mittens. It's always good to have options for knitting small diameter. And then what I used on all the itty bitty, I'm going to, you're punished. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything in this house. <laughs> for um, <laughs> for this, the ones that I used, I used this little Chiaogu set that has, it's an interchangeable set. So you can make uh, short little circular needles and in the set you have little bitty short needles and longer needles. And I always find it the most comfortable to put a longer needle in my right hand and the shorter needle in my left hand. And then when I had to switch from size six to seven, I could just pop the larger size needle onto the end of um, the cord I was using. So this is what, I, I'll give you a link to this because this little set has come in handy for me more times than I can say. I really like this. So let me see what else we have here. We did the yarn, the needles, the different options we have for knitting small diameters. Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to try to take it from an intermediate pattern more to an advanced beginner pattern by explaining all of the different steps, all of the different techniques used. And if you are, uh, well, if you're an advanced beginner, just watch the video and see how it goes because it's, uh, if, if, uh, if I'm explaining it well enough that you get it, you've got it. And luckily, dogs don't need really perfectly fitting sweaters. If it's a little loose on them, they're going to be fine. They're going to be comfortable. It's not like trying to fit, you know, a fitted sweater on a person. We're going to talk about reading the pattern. We're going to talk about what is probably the most confusing part of the sweater, which is doing the leg holes um, and then knitting the ribbing all the way around. So we're going to cover all of it. I'm going to get this yarn put away and all my samples back out again, and we will get started with that next. Okay, we are ready to get started on this pattern. And first we're going to start with deciding on the sweater size for your dog. So let's take a look. Okay, first let's take a look at how this whole thing comes together. We start here. This is a itty bitty sample that's not quite finished, but it's finished enough for me to show you and it all fits on camera very nicely. We're gonna start here at the cast on. We're gonna work ribbing. I've worked two by two ribbing here. The pattern calls for one by one ribbing, but if the cast on number for the size you're knitting is a multiple of four, you can do either. So we knit the ribbing in size six needles. We switch to size seven needles and you can change color here if you like. And uh, we knit stockinette where we knit every row. 
we're going to, our, uh, the beginning of our row is going to be here. We're going to increase on either side of the needle, uh, of the stitch marker, following the instructions for our size. And then we'll get to this part, the leg holes. And these don't have the little ribbing done on them yet, but we'll cast off little bits for each leg hole. We'll knit this part separately, and then we'll knit the back separately. We'll knit them all up to the same length, and then start knitting in the round again, and cast on stitches here and here. Knit in the round until we get to this part, cast off some more, and then we'll be working flat. You can still use your circular needles, but we'll be working flat. And you'll decrease on both sides to kind of narrow it towards the back of the sweater. And then when we finish with the main body of the sweater, before we get to the edging, we'll just leave those on the needle or on a spare needle so that we don't have to pick up stitches for this part. We can just knit across. And that's the basic construction. And now I want to talk about sizes. And I have the size, the first part of the pattern printed out here for us. The sizes are extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. For my Whippet, I knit a size large. I didn't do any alterations other than shortening the back a little bit. I tried it on her and I decided to take the last couple of inches the pattern called for off the back. We have three measurements here, base of neck, chest, and between leg openings. The one that we're really going to be concerned with is the chest. That's the one that we'll start with. This is the one we'll focus on because we can alter the pattern a little bit here and there as long as we have this measurement as close as possible. So 11 for a little bitty dog, up to 33 inches for a larger dog. Now, I knit the large for my Whippet, but if I was going to knit this sweater for one of my Basenjis, which I won't because they don't like wearing clothes, um, my dog has a 21 inch chest, right? So he's kind of between these two numbers. This is what I would do. I would start with the 18 inch size and work some extra increases. Remember this part of the sweater I pointed out where we're doing the increases? Work some extra increase rounds uh, to get up to 21 inches. And the gauge is just about four stitches per inch. And if I wanna get 18, 19, 20, 21, three extra I mean, I'm doing math in my head while I'm talking. Three extra inches, four stitches per inch, two increases per round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten extra rounds maybe? Oh, I think I'm messing up that math. You just want to add, <laughs> I should have figured this out ahead of time instead of trying to do math while I'm instructing on the fly. And I, I, what I would probably do is work maybe six extra rounds, measure it, see where I was, and see if I wanted to add more or not. Because you can just, you can lay it flat and measure what you have here to see how wide the chest is gonna be, and if you have enough inches. Um, or you can try it on the dog too. I actually tried it on the dog a couple times during, um, during knitting because it's like a top-down raglan that way. So that's how you're going to alter the sizes if you're between the sizes. And the way that I would choose the size, I picked the 18 and decided to add some increases to get up to a size because my Basenji has a pretty skinny neck. So the cast on number for 18 is going to be fine for him. If I had a dog with a thicker neck, I might start with a larger size and then do fewer increase rounds. Um, to get to the, the size that I want for them. I hope that makes sense. We're really just gonna focus on this because the rest of it kind of falls in line. Um, and you, of course, with so many dogs and so many shapes, you do have to take your dog into consideration. If we are looking at, this is the, the standard um, neck cuff, right? This is four inches long of neck cuff. If you have a pug, you might consider just doing one little inch of neck cuff right? Because pugs don't really don't have much of a neck. A whippet, you know, a, another kind of dog is going to take the whole length of that and wear it just fine. For uh, Dolly's sweater here, I think it looks so cute folded down, but on cold days, I can fold it up for her and she has plenty of gi giraffe neck to take care of all of that. 
So my point here is that take a look at your dog and what is going to be comfortable for them and what's going to fit them and then work it out that way. And you know what? I'm going to do the math for 21 inches when I'm not trying to talk on camera and I'm going to list that out <laughs> in, the, in the video description field and on my website because I'm sure there are other 21 inch dogs who want to know exactly what I did. Okay, let's do the next thing now. And the next thing is doing the, um, the cuff and changing colors to the um, changing colors to the body of the sweater. And what I have here is US6. I actually want some US7 needles. I'm going to switch to magic loop here for you. I actually think these are a six also, but I'll switch. Get to the end of this row. And now I'm going to take my other color. If I can find the end of the yarn. Here we go. And to do magic loop with a longer needle, I'm just going to start knitting off of the little shorties onto the longer needle, leaving myself about a six inch tail. I'm just gonna wrap that and pull it through and start knitting. And your pattern spells this out row by row exactly what you have to do for changing colors and doing the increase. I didn't mention, but I also, I cut the other color. I don't have scissors right here, but I will do that. I do have scissors right here. There's no need to keep the other color attached to your work. Okay, and because this is a magic loop, I'm going to pull that out to leave some cord hanging there. And I'll give you a link to a couple of my videos on magic loop. One is called Simple Magic Loop, and the other is called Getting Started with Magic Loop if you are actually going to start your work on magic loop. Start the cast on. And I guess I should give you a couple other links if you need the review, or at least one. Getting started with DPNs if you're knitting on double pointed needles. You want a review of that. It's a good thing I'm knitting a small size or you'd have to watch me knit for a really long time. Okay, those needles are empty. And now you see the magic loop situation I have here. I have cord sticking out and the rest of my work is here on a needle and the cord and I can knit a small diameter here just like this. I'll put the stitch marker back. And what I want to talk about now is the increases because we're going to be increasing on either side of the marker and the instructions, and also depending on the size you're knitting, you will be doing um, some increases really fast without a plain knit round between them, and some increases more slowly with a knit round between each increase round. And the pattern has us doing make one increases. That's what the pattern calls for. Um, I don't like stacking make one increases, so for the most part, on most of these samples, I did KFB. I did knit front back increases. I had one stitch just knit plain on either side of the marker and then I did um, KFB stitch. So it would be slip the marker, knit one, KFB, knit all the way around, KFB, knit one, back to the marker. That's how I did it. I thought knit ones were, or make uh, KFBs were a bit easier to work than stacking make one stitches. So that's what I decided to do. But you can use any one stitch increase that you like. Um, oh, there was <laughs> the other reason I had this out was I was going to show you correcting the color change jog. Now, when you're knitting in an, 
the round. We're essentially knitting in a spiral. And when you get to, um, when you get, when, when the color change happens, you'll often see a little stair-steppy jog between the stripes. So I'm gonna show you how to correct that. This is the first stitch of the second round in the new color. What I'm going to do is take my right needle and pull up the right leg of the V of the row below. You see that? Here's the whole V, here's the right leg. I'm gonna put that up on the needle with the first stitch and knit those two together. And if you do that, when you change color, on the first stitch of the second round, it's, I'm not, we're not gonna be able to see it here because there's too much going on. There isn't enough distance, but it does give you a nice clean color break. I guess I can show it to you on Dolly's sweater because I did it each time and these color breaks are all pretty even. I've only steam blocked this. I haven't washed this one yet. Washed and dried it yet. Okay, I think that's it for this piece. That's it for getting started, getting to the increases. Next up, we will look at the, the leg holes. And that's it for the beginning here for the increases. Go ahead and finish up the increases, keeping in mind the size of your dog and how you want the sweater to fit. And then next up, we're going to cover the leg holes and decreasing for the back, which goes pretty quickly, as well as the edging. In this section, we're going to cover everything else, the rest of the section. The first part is the leg holes, which is probably the most unusual, especially if you're a more beginning knitter, the most unusual part to knit, but we're gonna cover it. Let's go and take a look. Okay, we are on my little tiny Christmas color dog sweater here. We've finished all the increases, and now it's time to do the leg holes. And the thing to remember here is that you want to make each side of the stitch marker, you want to make it match on each side. The reason I'm saying that is the pattern designer counts binding off and uh, binding off in the middle of the row a little bit differently than I do. So I'm going to follow the, the first half and then make the second half match because it's easier for me than trying to follow the counting. So I'm on the round here with the leg holes and I'm also, I have the challenge of working in stripes at the same time. I've knit the number of stitches the pattern tells me to and now I need to bind off four stitches. So to do that, I'm going to knit one, knit two, and that counts as one bound off. So the process of getting one stitch bound off is to knit one, knit two, pull one stitch over the other, that counts as one. Okay, so knit one, I have two stitches there, two, three, four. Okay, now I have a big gap there. And you get to watch me knit all the way around this itty bitty duck sweater again. And I'm not counting. Like I said, the pattern, the pattern designer counts differently than I do, and it was only causing confusion. It's just easier for me to mirror the two sides. And this is, I mean, you could, that'll work on any, any size that you're knitting of this pattern. I'm just so glad she gave us so many sizes and such a nice and easy to follow pattern. Okay, we're gonna do this again here in a minute. Okay, let me count. To make it match, and double check that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm ready to start binding off. Knit one, knit two. Whoopsie. Try that again. Knit one, knit two. Have 
having a hard time getting the stitch. That counts as one bound off. Knit another one. That counts as two. Three. Four. And now I'll knit to the beginning of the round and the pattern. The pattern has us knit up to the gap where we bound off because now we're just going to knit this center chest piece by itself. We'll knit this, we'll turn the work, we'll purl those stitches knit and you're going to knit this to different lengths for different sizes. Um, keep track of your row count because then we're going to cut the yarn and reattach it here and knit the exact same number of rows on all of the back stitches. And what that is going to do is get us up to here. This very funny looking piece right here where I've, I've knit the center, I've knit the back, they are the exact same number of rows, and I'm ready to get started on the next bit, which is casting on. I'm on magic loop again here. And if you've cast on in the middle of a row before, you're probably familiar with the backwards loop cast on. It is not the greatest cast on in the world as far as sturdiness goes, but it is perfect for what we're doing right here. And so we want to cast on the same number of stitches that we bound off here to make our little square leg hole. What you'll do is you put the yarn in your left hand with your thumb on the yarn like this and flip. Put your needle in the loop on your thumb and tighten it up. Thumb on the yarn like this and flip. Needle in that loop and tighten it up. Thumb, flip three, thumb, flip, four. And then we have those cast on. We can knit across the center chest pieces, the center chest piece stitches. And we'll do it again for this other leg hole. Yarn in the left hand, thumb on the yarn. One, two, three, four. And then I need to adjust my magic loop. And I can knit around the whole rest of the back. I am knitting in the round again. And when you come to these stitches, these, these uh, stitches that we just cast on, you'll find that they are, they're fussy. It's not a great cast on as far as, I mean, the cast on you did when you cast on for the, um, the neck cuff is better than this cast on as far as sturdiness goes. It can, um, because each stitch doesn't have any kind of knot or anything under it, it tightens up as you move along. So just scoot the stitches to the tip of the needle to get your needle in there and it really doesn't matter how it ends up looking in the end because we're going to cover it all up when we pick up the stitches. But just keep in mind, even if it's a pain in the neck, it's only a few stitches. <laughs> even if you're knitting the big size, it's not very many stitches. Okay, the next piece I want to show you is the pink one, my instructions say, because we uh, are going to stop knitting in the round. We're going to bind off some stitches and work this piece flat and I want to show you how this is going to go. I'm at the beginning of the round and I will follow the instructions for the number of stitches to cast off for the size I'm knitting. And then you'll knit around the rest of the stitches. Okay. 
How many times have you watched me work all these rows? Okay, let me check the pattern. So I feel like I'm doing something incorrect here. I don't want to get this shape. Nope, I've got it. I should be telling you all the needles that I'm using these are Knitter's Pride Symphony 9-inch circulars. And these are collage needles with a firm cord. And these are, oh, what are these? Oh, these are uh, Chiao Gu from my little set. I'll keep trying to remember. Oh, and this first sample, these are signature stilettos. And I know I had some Knitter's Pride from the new Mindful collection in there. Okay, I'm back up to the beginning. Well, I'm back up to, yes, the beginning of the round. I can remove the stitch marker because we're not going to knit in the round anymore. I'll turn the work and I'm going to bind off some more stitches. And you can bind off knit-wise or purl-wise. It's up to you because it's, this is going to be covered up. This is trickier on the short circulars, the pearl side. Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple more here because this has to be painful to watch on these short circulars. The knit side's great on the short circulars. <laughs> the pearl side I don't have a lot of practice with. After you bind off the number of stitches for your pattern for the size you're knitting, you will just purl the rest of the way across and then you will be knitting flat. Let me find the blue piece. So many samples, right? I wanted to show a lot of the different colors. <coughs> Excuse me. So I knit, <laughs> I knit all the samples in different, in different colors. So you're knitting flat, you're knitting back and forth, and you're going to be decreasing at the beginning of each round. Is it the beginning and the end, or the, just the beginning of the... Let me get this right. Yeah, um, on some of the right side rows, you're uh, decreasing on both sides. I wasn't sure if you were decreasing on the wrong sides. Okay. And you will slip the first stitch when you do that, and that's going to become important here in just a minute, slipping the first stitch is going to give us this nice edge that makes it easy when we're picking up stitches for the edging. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Let me get, oh, I have so many samples of everything here. <laughs> where, where is everything? Where are my scissors? I have so many samples. Okay. Let me use this color because it's close. And some needles. And um, I'm gonna show you um, and talk about picking up and knitting the edging. And here, um, we can go over this really quickly if you haven't done this before. We're gonna start at the center back. I'm gonna put my needle in, grab the color that you're using for the edging wrap the needle, whoops, I just grabbed the wrong end, wrap the needle and pull it through and across this little bit, these stitches that we bound off, you're going to pick up every stitch. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my needle in under both legs of the V and this is tight, this is tight right here because these bound off stitches are pretty tight. That one split.
Okay, I'm not going to do all of that. I'm going to jump over here because I also have these pretty short needles. Then when you get to these stitches that we slipped, it's just the same thing. Whoops. It's just the same thing. We're going to pick up every stitch. Now, if you think about it, because we slipped the first stitch, this is a double long stitch. So one edge stitch represents two rows. So it's just perfect to pick up every stitch along the way. And these are much easier to pick up, as you can see. And you'll pick up every stitch along here. And then when you get to these, ta-da, we left them on the needle so you can just knit across them. You'll pick up every stitch along the decreases over here and here. And then you'll work in ribbing to match the ribbing that you did on the cuff if you chose uh, one by one rib or two by two rib. And let's take a look at this. This is the one that I did. And if you're doing one by one rib, you of course, you want to end up with an even number of stitches so that it all works out. If you're doing two by two rib, it's a little more complicated. You need a multiple of four. And if your stitch count ends up being a little bit off, you can pick up some extra stitches or decrease out to make that match. There's one little thing here that I wanted to point out. Totally not necessary, totally not part of the pattern. Um, I made some increases here at the back edge to make this part lie flat. And in the pattern you see it, it's kind of, there are no increases. And so it kind of hugs like this. Hugging is good. I wanted mine to lie flat. And so at the very corner, every other round of ribbing, I worked a KFB on either side of the very corner stitch. So I knit around, knit uh, KFB, KFB around the very edge, knit around, KFB, KFB, and I did that here and on the other side here. Totally optional, not, um, not required, but that's something that I did. And then the last thing, of course, is the leg openings. And even if you left the leg openings kind of in a mess, I mean, it's going to be a mess because we've cast on, we've bound off, we have edge stitches, everything's looking kind of different. You're probably going to want to use double pointed needles for this part to pick up the stitches just like we did. You'll pick up um, for whatever the number is that the pattern tells you to pick up. That, let me say, is a suggestion because your mileage may vary, but take that number, divide it by four, and do your best to pick up that many stitches um, so that you get as close as possible to the number. And then you're going to knit those rounds to the length the pattern tells you. I will tell you this, I knit the exact length that the pattern said for the leg openings, which was fine because my whippet has long legs and it's not a problem but you don't want to knit the leg hole. This is a dog owner talking, not a knitter. <laughs> this is a dog owner, <laughs> maybe both. You don't want to knit the leg cuffs so that they go beyond the dog's elbow. You know what I'm talking about? If it goes beyond their elbow, it will pull the whole sweater down and make it fit kind of funny. But if it sits up above their elbow, the rest of the sweater, even though it's stretchy, will fit up around their body and not get pulled down. And I'm saying this out of experience, not from dog sweaters, but from um, you know jammies and stuff that my dogs have had. If the, if the leg opening is long, you want it to be really loose so it doesn't catch on their little elbow. If you have something more fitted like this, keep it up above their elbow. I was thinking about the leg cuffs when I was talking with a friend about making these for her corgis. <laughs> And they have, they have little short legs, so she might want to keep that pretty short. But once you do that, you knit those, and then for both the leg cuffs and the edging all the way around the back, when I bound off, I bound off in pattern, meaning I knit the knits and purled the purls, and very importantly, I used a needle size, two sizes bigger. So I had... Uh, size seven, when I knit the body, I bound off using a needle size nine. And the reason I do that is it eliminates the need to do what the pattern says, bind off loosely. Well, I don't have to bind off loosely. I'm using this big old needle I can bind off my regular way, and I don't have to think about it. Also, when you're finished, the, um, the edging looks really good. It's really consistent because we had that needle size keeping it there. 
keeping it that exact size. So knitting the knits and purling the purls, no special stretchy bind off necessary, just a regular bind off in pattern. Is that it? Did I get through all of these millions of billions of samples? And that is it. I hope you really enjoy knitting this sweater. Many thanks to Kramer Yarns and Beth Idala for designing this sweater and in so many sizes. How handy is it? There's so many sizes available. Um, your kit to follow along, you can click the little I in the upper right hand corner to go to my website. I'll also list out everything I talk about in the video description field below on YouTube. Many thanks. This is the last video of 2020. I will see you in January. Happy New Year. And that's some dogs saying Happy New Year. <laughs> Nothing bad's happening. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>